Hi, welcome into my studio. And I'm doing another pastel paper test. Um, lots of you that follow me on Patreon, I know you're now doing pastels. And some of you are finding papers difficult to source in, in your countries or get deliveries, what have you. And you've also heard about uh, various pastel papers from other artists, I've no doubt, and some some have got their preferences. My task or what I try to do is to show you um, just things that, you know, with no bias, so you can make your own mind up on what you would prefer. Thing with pastels and pastel papers, lots of artists got their preference. It's probably what they've started off on and they know and they're very comfortable with. So let's have a look at what I've got here. Now these are all what I would class as kind of a, a rough texture, what you'd call a sanded paper. Doesn't mean they're sandpaper as such, but they've got that kind of a grabbing texture to them. So here I've got some pastel mat paper, 360 grams. Um, that's my preferred paper so far for all round use. It comes in all different colors. I've just got white here and I'll go into more specifics, but let's just see what papers I'm gonna test. You can see I've done some little testing already, so you haven't got to sit through all the boring bits. I've got some UART 400. Lots of asked for that to be looked at. I've got some Fisher 400. That's another popular one people have asked for. Me Tiens, the touch paper. Okay, so make sure it's the touch paper. Art Spectrum Color Fix. Seems to be a favorite with a lot of people. I've had a packet of those delivered and then the Sennelia pastel card. So don't get that mixed up with pastel matte by Claire Fontaine, the Sennelia pastel card. And straight off you can see there's lots of differences in between them. The, um, let me have a look at my notes as well so I get things right. Sennelia pastel card, 360 GSM. It's very thick, nice and thick. I like it when it's thick like that, it lies perfectly flat. Um, comes in 14 colors. The problem I've got with this is it's finely ground cork on a board. I've shown in other videos it's not resistant to water, it's not resistant to solvent either and uh, I've done a little test here just to verify again if you put water on there or solvent and give it a rub it comes straight off down to the under surface. That concerns me about that paper. Also the fact that when you brush it like that, lots of the surface actually, like dust, just comes off. Okay, and that's a really expensive paper. Art Spectrum Color Fix. Um, this one comes in lots of different colors as well, 20 colors. Now it's screen printed on a watercolor paper. So a nice thick watercolor paper. Screen printed on top of it, 300 GSMs. Um, you put water on there or I put uh, solvent on there so isopropyl alcohol because some pastel artists like to use that kind of like a, a wash like a watercolor wash on the first layer so I wanted to test it against that it's fine with those um, the problem I had with this in the pack if you can see here let me zoom in a bit Many bit more by here, up by here, here as well. You can see these little white dots. That's where the screen print has actually missed the paper. So there's been some sort of de wetting or, or whatever it is because they screen print their own um, color fix uh, surface that you can buy in pots. They screen print that on there. This was on lots of the sheets in there, and that was really concerning because. It's actually the paper there. So if I put a pastel onto the surface, that's what you're going to get. That's going to be a big problem and that means that um, piece of paper for me is completely unusable where those marks are. Once again, that's an expensive paper to purchase. Okay, so I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing. It's up to you guys to decide if you want to buy any of these papers and try any of these papers. This is completely unbiased. It's what I had. I purchased these in my own packs. So I spent quite a lot of money on these papers 
and on some of the papers I'm never going to be using again. Um, Metiens, the touch paper, that apparently is uh, waterproof. It comes in 11 colours, acid-free, 350 GSM. Um, apparently, although a lot of these actually feel a bit different. Looks like a screen printed again, looks very, very similar to the Art Spectrum colour fix. Didn't have those little missing dots in there though, but it did have kind of an unevenness again to the surface. You can see on this dark one that um, it's a bit patchy in places. When I put solvent on there, wipe straight off down to the paper underneath. Um, when I put water on there and left it in dots and then I rubbed it with a cotton wool bud came off straight down to the paper. The green is gouache that I watered down slightly, put that on and I rubbed it with um, a cotton bud again and you can see the surface was starting to come off. I wouldn't call that word waterproof. I'd say it's probably uh, water resistant. If you're doing a gouache type of wash, it would be kind of okay. So um, up to you to decide about that as well. While I'm zoomed in, I might as well show you, this is the Fisher 400. This is pH neutral, comes in one colour, sand, 360 GSM, waterproof apparently, um, so okay with gouache, inks. I tested it against alcohol, made no difference to it. The black line here is just a black Conti stick that I've drawn down and then put some alcohol on there. That was fine. The grey is um, just a bit of pastel that I've rubbed with alcohol as well. So that was okay too. The, um, the, the thing is with, with some of these like the Metiens Touch, it's not really uh, alcohol or solvent proof. But if you're just putting a quick wash on it or quick water, you can kind of get away with it. The one that's the worst for this is the pastel card. Okay, the UART 400, now that looks, as you can see, almost identical to this Fisher 400. Fisher 400 has got a kind of a mottled -y surface to it. They feel pretty much identical. See the similarity there? Now the UART comes in sand and they've recently started doing it in black as well. In the sand there's seven grades going from 240 up to 800, 800 being the finest. In the black we've got four grades. Okay apparently for solvent, oil, water, alcohol. I test it against the water. The alcohol no problems whatsoever. Perfectly fine. That comes in um, sheets, little packets as well. And then finally the one I've been using for a long time, the pastel mat. 360 grams and by Clay Fontaine. Acid free, comes in boards as well, got 14 colours, 12 with the boards as far as I know. 360 grams I said, the board is really thick, 1.8 millimetres and I, I really like that hard surface. Water resistant, I've also tested it, it seems to be solvent resistant as well comes in loads of different pack sizes and sheet sizes okay so as i said i'm just going to show you what i find um, a lot of my followers are now using pan pastels so i might as well test them against that and see what happens with pastel mat that's a familiar product for me now it grips the surface the pastel Very little dust as you can see there. If I give it a rub with my finger on around the edge you can see not much spreads on there. Okay. And smooths out quite easily. So that's pastel mat. Fisher 400. I like the way that this actually lies flat. All the UART ones I've got um, seem to bend a lot over time so I'd want to stick those down. The fissure is coming up slightly but it's only say a millimetre or two. 
So I'll do exactly the same for this one. Feels completely different to the pastel matte. It is a sand, kind of a sand paper, and it's really gripping the pastel off of the um, soft tool. So I'll just try and blend that edge as well. And you can see it really will blend out, but it's holding my finger, even when I'm going very softly. You don't want to be blending with your fingers much on that paper. But when it's filled up a bit of the tooth, you know, that's not so bad, but on just the paper, it's really grabby. So that's the uh, Fisher 400. So I wonder now what the UART 400 is like in comparison, because they did seem to be very, very similar. And that is very similar. Perhaps not quite grabbing as much as the Fisher 400, if I put both of them side by side. Not much difference. They are actually very, very similar. If I just blend around the edge really grabbing my finger again so they seem almost identical okay almost identical maybe they are identical the art spectrum color fix let's give that a go the feel it, as a screen print is a different feel the pastel matte in comparison kind of just feels like card is is very smooth in comparison and as I showed on previous tests with this, even when I've really loaded up the pastel, you can see that screen print surface through there. Let me zoom in a bit more for you. So you can see the surface where it's on the pastel mat. You can't, even when I blend it in, and in fact, when I blend it in, it gets worse. If I put a lot more pastel on there, you can still see the surface. Bearing in mind that um, pan pastels are not completely opaque. That kind of shows that up. Clean my finger. See, it doesn't hold the pastel, so I had a bit of dust there. We'll blend the edge, and it's not grabbing my finger like those sanded papers. But you can see a big difference there between those two. Okay, let's have a look at the Metiens touch, which I'm obviously pronouncing completely wrong. So this feels similar to the color fix. It's so got that screen printed, but it's, it's rougher again. So once again, you've kind of got that. It's not showing up as much because it's a darker paper. But uh, you can see that screen print pattern through it, but that does blend out better than that art spectrum. I'd rather that one, I believe, than the color fix. Okay, last one. Sennelia pastel card. This is doesn't feel as grippy as the others, although it's, it's just a bit of a, a strange surface. It feels like sandpaper but um, not as grippy as I said, and the surface comes off a bit too. And blend that in place. I can blend out the edges as well. It's not that dissimilar to pastel matte, although it feels completely different. Got a bit of dust there as well compared to some of the others. So that's some tested for blending with pan pastel. Okay, so let's have a quick look now with a uh, soft pastel, Schminky. It's just a really soft one. Let's see what happens with these. I'm putting quite a bit down on the pan pastel, uh, sorry, on the pastel mat by Clay Fontaine, and then blend it in, and then blend in around the edge to see how far it will come out. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. Let's have a look at the fissure. Let's keep the pastel mat there by the side as well for a comparison, because I know a lot of you are familiar 
we've uh, passed on that and even with the same pressure that fissure is really pulling the pastel uh, into its surface it's really depositing in there it is very difficult if you try to blend around the edge because it's just grabbing my finger as you can see and probably here very very little dust and while I'm at it I might as well put the art spectrum by the side and do exactly the same there as we'd expect seems to be pretty much identical to that Fisher 400 I don't think other than that little bit of a mottledy appearance on the Fisher 400 I don't think I could even tell the difference between them Fisher 400 only comes in the 400 grade as far as I know whereas the benefit with the UART we've got all those different grades in there and talking of which if I go to the smoothest of the grades so that's the 800 I might as well push, push that over and have a look at this one as well just to see what a really smooth grade of UART is like in comparison blend that in now that is starting to feel a lot less well not a lot less grippy but less grippy got a bit of dust on the surface because it hasn't grabbed it all in but that's feeling a lot more like the pastel matte paper see how I can blend out it's not grabbing my finger as much much nicer on the fingers and in fact I've got a 600 here as well so we might as well have a look at that too as we'd expect that's going to be in between what we found so got that bit of a grippiness to the surface again but only a little bit more than the finer grade okay so I think I could use any of those they all seem pretty good let's try this me TN's touch again See how the surface is showing there. Let's push it into the surface. Obviously, these pastels are more opaque. So easier on the fingers. You can see that texture. Art spectrum, color fix. That's the ones that have those little pieces missing from the screen print. that in again blend it well you see all the dust we've got around there and once again I can see that surface that's definitely probably out of all of these the only paper that I would never use because I don't like that surface that I can see the pattern in all the time they've let themselves down by having these misprints on the screen print also so let's look at the Sennelia pastel card now one of my friends uses this a lot and produces brilliant wildlife work it's definitely grabbing it more than pastel matte but it really has a dusty surface to it you can see I can just push them off it's a real dusty surface and I don't like the fact that we can't use water with it, it can't use solvent with it and it's also expensive okay let's test the layering ability so what I've done here to give it a good challenge I put some gray down this is the pastel mat I put a bit of brown on top and um, I put quite a bit down as well more than I would normally on an underdrawing but I want to challenge these out so what I'm going to do now is put some marks on top so if we were simulating to infer in my normal way so this wouldn't be unusual for me to do okay so that's a Carbothello light pencil and then I've got a Carbothello yellow and I'm doing my normal twisting of the pencil those that watch my wildlife videos will know I do that and then this is a, a pit pencil different color to that yellow so I'm not expecting it to be yellow but I'm looking for that crispness of mark okay so that's our regular or my regular pastel matte 
paper that I'm used to. So if I bring in the Fisher 400 and I've done the same exactly side by side with those, blending it in then with my finger just as I did with a pastel mat. So let's have a look in comparison. And you can see straight off how much brighter that is, how much sharper it is. It's really grabbing the pastel, so the pit at the end, much sharper. Could I soften it out if I wanted to? Just on the edge, yes. Clean finger, could I do have a pastel mat? Yes. Okay, so I'm thinking we're going to get more layers out there and when you feel them that's not surprising. So if I move that across a bit and then have a look at the equivalent then with the UART. So let's just look at these two for now because I did say these seem to be pretty much identical looking papers. Just flatten it as I'd expect. Nice and crisp and again vibrant. Yep, very, very similar. I can blend it to the Fisher 400. Okay, so you can see the difference. I don't want to zoom out too much. I want you to see the crispness on there. So what if I then put them to the side a bit and use the UART 600? So that's a bit of a finer grade. Still getting the sharp lines on me. And then the 800, so that's the finest grade. Still nice and sharp on there as well. And vibrant. Could I blend it if I wanted to? Yes, much more easily to blend. And the harder grit. So that 400 starts to get more difficult. Okay, so let's move those out the way. Let's keep the pastel mat there because that's my kind of control. That's what I'm used to. Let's take a look at pastel card, Senelia by the side. So I've laid the gray, laid the brown. This is what I did on all the others. Blended in quite roughly. Not even that produced quite a bit of powder on my finger. Um, let's try this light color. Yep, nice and sharp again. I'd expect it is quite a rough uh, texture, the yellow as well. So that will hold the mark better, sharper than pastel matte. So let's bring in Art Spectrum Color Fix. I say I've blended that in well also. Fairly sharp mark. Probably about the same as pastel matte. Could I blend it? Yes, but it's got those disadvantages that we saw earlier on. And I think the last one is the Meteense Touch. Well, that's blended in well. <sighs> Dusty, but yeah, holding the surface good. Sharp marks as well. Okay, so let's wrap this up now. Let's, let's look at the three papers that I'm not keen on at all. Um, bottom place has got to be Art Spectrum for me. Um, sheet size, if you're buying sheet size, 24 by 32 centimeters, that's only £1.40, 70 by 50 centimeters, £4.80, that's from Jackson's Art Supplies. My issue with this is basically these inclusions, that's the big issue. Then the fact that when I blend, or even if I don't blend, I can see this um, printed surface through the pastels as well unless i'm using something extremely opaque i'm going to see that so that i wouldn't be using at all 
probably um, next that I won't be using Meteance Touch. Once again, I could kind of see the pattern through it. It wasn't resistant to water or solvent as much as I would have liked. Did grab the pastel quite well, produced a nice sharp mark, but when there's other choices out there, personally, I wouldn't be buying that either. The Sennelia pastel card, as I said, I've seen some fantastic work on this, so I know it can be produced. What don't I like about it? The dustiness of the surface. I can just wipe it off and feel the dust on my hand where it's come off. I don't like that. I do like the fact we can make nice sharp marks on there. And I also don't like the fact that it's the least resistant to water and solvent of all of the papers by far. It's a nice feel to the paper, but it's very expensive as well. An 80 by 60 sheet will cost 11 pounds. And it comes in packs also. And I've got a pack there. I may well do a drawing on there one day just to see what I can do, but um, I don't think I'll be buying any more of those. Okay, so what do I like? Comes as no surprise, I still like my pastel mat. It allows me to blend a lot. It's very um, kind to the fingers compared to some of the others. It comes in various packs. It also comes in sheets, 50 by 70 centimeters will cost around about 575 from Jackson's, 70 by 100, that'll be 11.25, and a 24 by 32 really large sheet Oh, sorry, that's a smaller sheet, that's £2.50. The large one is a 70 by 100. Comes in that pastel card that I really like as well. Trouble with that, as you'd expect, is a lot more processing, so it's a lot more expensive. 1.8 millimeters thick, large 70 by 100 sheet you can cut down, that's 17.95, and a 50 by 70 is 9.25. I keep that, those uh, thick card for my real special drawings. I've used white for this test. I don't never use white really on 99% of my, my work, but I use that just to use up this paper. But it blends out well, evenly, and as I said, it will hold a nice sharp mark. Um, sharp enough usually, and you can still blend it, and as I said, it's kind on the fingers. So that's pastel matte. Here's my surprises. Fisher 400. It lies nice and flat. Couldn't fault that, resistant to solvent, resistant to water. Um, comes in one colour, sand, not a big problem because we can actually tone that with um, gouache. That's what I would do, I'd use a thin gouache to put a wash over this. We can make that really any colour we want. Haven't tried that yet, but there shouldn't be a problem doing it. 360 grams, and this comes in sheets. Now a 70 by a 50 sheet is £7.10. So £7.10 for that, £5.75 for pastel mats, so it's a bit dearer by the look of it. Um, also comes in 10 sheet sizes, so I think it only comes in 70 by 50 and then you can buy them in 10, so they work out at £65. So this is expensive, um, but it's probably something I'm going to, going to try out because I like the fact that we can get lots and lots of detail, lots of layers. I mean, blending is not so easy. So I'd be using this, I think, if I was going to do something that wanted a lot of detail. So perhaps a big cat, just the face filling it with uh, not too much blending or softness required on a background, if any at all. So when I want real detail, fur layers, building lots of layers. This is something I'm definitely going to try out. So that's the Fisher 400. I also liked the UARTs. So I've got the 400, the 600, the 800 there. They all blended up well. I don't like this curl at all. So it's got to be taped down, but when you remove the tape, it's going to curl up. So what I would do with that is stick that down to a pH um, neutral board so that I've got a lovely flat rigid surface to work on. Now these come in as I said sand or black seven grades on the on the sand color and you can get an 18 by 24 inch sheet that'll cost about seven six pound ninety a 
21 by 27 sheet, £7.20. Um, it comes in some packs as well, especially you can try out all the different um, grades in those packs. So that's something I'm going to be trying, especially I think the 800 or the 600. The 400, I don't know, I, th I think it's a bit too uh, grabby. I kind of like this 800 holds the sharp marks better than pastel mat. So once again, I'd be using these papers for something that required a lot of detail. So my still my go-to paper that's a bit cheaper is going to be pastel mat. Um, but when I want extreme detail, so perhaps on quite a bit of my wildlife work in future, I'm going to be looking at these sanded papers. So the Fisher and the U Arts. So hope you've enjoyed that um, quick roundup. Well, it wasn't that quick, but hope that will help you decide perhaps on some other papers you may want to try and some perhaps you definitely don't want to waste a lot of money on. See you all again real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.